more and head on over to supertalktv.com. You'll see I'm not alone in the studio today. And you will, you'll also see that my guest in here is panting, but that's not the human one. That's the four-legged one. And it's hot out there, and you guys had to run over to the correct building. We did. So no problem with that. We'll definitely let him catch his breath. But joining us is Miss Katrina Miller. She's executive director and founder of Mississippi Therapy Animals. And, man, y'all are up to some good. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for I'm having gonna get us. you to pull that up just yes. a little bit closer. There you go. There Perfect. we go. Okay, so who is joining us? Who's our four-legged friend? Okay, so this is Chicken Tender. He is an English cream golden retriever, and he is one of our therapy animals for Mississippi Therapy Animals. I adore him, and he looks, he's so excited to be he's on camera and so be excited. here. And I'm excited about this topic. It's good to say this is our third try. It felt like the world did not want us to, to get this story out. No, it did not. But that from COVID to car issues and everything, I said, you know what? Third time is the charm. And I feel like more folks need to understand the impact and the benefits of therapy animals, not just maybe as personal use, but also mm -hmm. what they're able to do in certain settings uh, throughout Mississippi and within communities. So let's go. You're the founder of Mississippi Therapy Animals. So, Katrina, how did all that get started? Yes. So I will give you just a short rundown of how this got started. Um, when I was younger, um, I was removed from my home by Child Protective Services. And so I had a lot of abuse um, that was uh, in that situation. And through that time, I was able to kind of lean on my animals. Um, I was pretty neglected and kind of not able to really kind of go out with a lot of different human or friends. And so uh, lo and behold, he just didn't know that my animals were really helping save me. So the animals that I did have access to um, helped save me and helped me make the choice along with my personal choice of saving me from suicide. So, or something worse, um, or hurting my abuser, one of the two. Um, so with that being said, fast forwarding it, I was able, um, Child Protection Services removed me from my home when I was 17 and uh, placed me elsewhere. And then I was adopted out my senior year um, to a family. And then I actually went on to college and I was the first to graduate um, high school in my side of the family. And I just realized later on through my life how much the animals helped me. Um, and so it was really important for me to continue that and to bring it here to the state um, to help either save somebody or just impact their life. Which I think anybody yeah. who has a fur baby absolutely knows the impact mm -hmm. they can just simply have by being your pet. You can't imagine, and two, I mean, feelings of loneliness or just comfort and love. I just saw earlier today a meme that said a dog will love you more than you love yourself, and or the, oh, it's the yeah. only, I guess, person that will love you more than you uh, than you love yourself and anybody. Yes. And that goes along for other animals. So you mentioned animals growing up. Was it just maybe your typical uh, dog, or were you on a like farm situation where you had? access to you know a, a mm -hmm. variety of animals so I actually had access to a white dove and I, I was in the city so not always in a farm setting um, I did move around a lot um, you know when I was younger but I had a dove I had a cocker spaniel and a ferret um, which is just amazing because that dove it was just a bird right everybody thinks it's just a bird but that bird and all of them, but I can just remember that bird just really represented like freedom for me. And so I was like, oh, I can't wait to have freedom one day. So, um, and then I love the bird it. comes back by choice to see you, it, Yeah, which is so interesting, too, that, <laughs> that you mentioned that, uh, Katrina, because we have a little we have a birdhouse uh, outside that we have actually on our back porch, but it's sitting down. It's not occupied birds. It's occupied by two frogs and they <laughs> yeah. have like taken it on as their home. And I know it sounds the strangest thing, but if you follow me on any social, you'll know that my youngest has fallen yeah. to be, be besties with this frog. And we've <laughs> created this entire we just assume that the frog loves us as much as we love mm -hmm. the frog. And it's become this routine of of going out every night and checking to see if Mr. Frog is there and, you know, or whatever it may be. And, you know, when you when you allow kids just mm -hmm. to have their 
natural imagination or natural connection to nature. Right. It really is mind boggling or, you know, uh, that my, not mind boggling, but it's just really inspiring to see mm-hmm. how they can connect with things that adults tend to just walk past by or not yes. think, not have that like attachment to. They can get attached to, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Um, and that's really therapeutic and bonding for you and your son. Um, we have a frog as well in our program. And so that's exciting. I, I'm glad to hear that. Um, everybody connects differently with different animals, different situations. And so that is the reason why we do so many different animals in the program. So when you thought about starting this Mississippi therapy animals, how long ago was this Katrina? So this was around 2014 when I really, when it kind of really hit me hard. I knew that when I was younger and I was in my twenties, I had a vision, but it felt really far away. I really was still trying to help myself um, and get through that to where to get that confidence and just um, the plan together. So I let God work in my life. And uh, finally, 2014 is when I was able to finally start everything and really put plans into place. And then I was able to file legally the nonprofit in 2019. And I quit my job at a uh, mental health and child protective services position um, and move towards doing this full time. Was it something that you kind of sowed the seeds with those around you saying, hey, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And just got the response of like, oh, my gosh, somebody should be doing that. Yes, that sounds amazing. Or was it more people had to connect with, OK, I need to see it in action before I, I can see it has value. I just went for it. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't say anything. Uh, m- my husband knows me best, and the people who know me know when I get something on my mind, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. I'm going to find a way, one way or another, and it's going to happen. And so I kind of told my husband a little bit about it, but I just went for it. Um, of course, family, you kind of have to include in on things a little bit. and Sometimes. Yeah, some, sometimes. <laughs> the, honey, I'm going to quit my job qu- it, conversations. It didn't, or... it, didn't, it didn't exactly go like that. <laughs> so, but it was one of those things where it was like, you're moved to do it and you have to do it. You, I just had to do it. And I just um, put my notice in, went for it, and worked really, really hard. <laughs> Did you have anything to model after? I mean, I'm sure you're not the only therapy, uh, animal therapy organization, nonprofit around. Are you the only one in Mississippi that does what you do? So we specifically. are specifically. Yeah, specifically, we are um, that I'm aware of the only one in Mississippi um, that does the type of organization and the things that we do and how we do it. Um, there are some national organizations uh, that I have come across, um, but uh, for me specifically, starting this, a lot of this was it, it's in my head, <laughs> so it just came from me. But now that I'm doing what I do, I've started to see some national things that are amazing, and that some organizations are doing. I know that there are uh, there are some dog trainers, not pet trainers, but dog trainers here in the Madison area that are nationally known, at least for the blind and the deaf, and mm-hmm. and helping and hearing and seeing. And so this is a little bit different. I mean, although those are great, mm-hmm. they serve absolutely yes. serve their purpose. Your animals serve a different purpose. They do. It, we have kind of two parts of the program. So we uh, do have volunteers and we do have therapy animals that support the public. But we also have a side of it to where I've trained psychiatric service animals that help individuals with disabilities. Um, and so I'm nationally um, a trainer and American Kennel Club. I'm an evaluator with that national organization. And part of our program is we do have to train these animals. I do. And we have to complete obedience and specialized training and public access training. Yeah, because if they're going to be out in public, you Mm want to make sure that they have their manners. Yes. Which, as you can, if you're looking, we (laughs) lost Chicken Tender. He finally decided to calm down and and lay on the ground like a good dog. But he is totally welcome to get in on the conversation. Conversation, which we're going to continue coming up next with Katrina Miller. She's the executive director of the Mississippi Therapy Animals.
weather channel. But also take your browser to supertalktv.com. You'll see I'm not alone. I've got a special guest in the studio. I've never had a chicken tender or a four-legged <laughs> lover in here, and he is up to good things along with his trainer, Katrina Miller. She is the founder of Mississippi Therapy Animals, and we're learning all about that um, today. And I, I love this because you were talking about um, the connection with your childhood with certain animals and then mentioning my daughters with her frog. I would love to know for those listening, text in 601-879-4395 if you had a special connection with the pet growing up. And it doesn't have to just be a cat or a dog. It could be a horse. It could be a cow. The stranger, the better. Um, because I think, you know, when we are young, we do make the, we're eight, we are, we allow ourselves to make those connections with animals more than I think uh, sort of adults do. You mentioned yes. something though, Katrina, that you focus on evidence-based uh, therapies. So in the world of uh, therapy animals, what does that mean? What kind of weight does that hold? So evidence-based means that there is proven research, um, whether it's through grad students in doctorate programs uh, to professionals, um, actually putting out research showing you that um, it's proven to change health and improve health mental health as well. So there's a lot of evidence-based research um, to back up the therapy animals and their therapeutic benefits to us, to our health and mental health. So right now, where is some of that research being done, like with specific patients or populations? So this is uh, around the world nationwide, but if you go to um, the Human Animal Bond Institute, uh, Research Institute, uh, their website, you will find a lot of uh, human animal bond and therapy animal research. Um, that's going to be one main one. Um, but here in Mississippi, of course, um, I'm at Jackson State as a grad student doing research. Um, all of my papers and everything and every, any chance I get the research on it. Um, but there are also some links you can utilize when you go through the human animal bond website that will direct you to a lot of research um, to show you that. So you know the commercial, I think I can see it in my head, it's where the little girl has her arm out and she thinks she's going to get more medicine. I think it's a cancer yes. patient. And then they're like, we're going to try something different today and sort of bring in, the, and bring in the animal. Is it just the ability to love something or the good? What is that sort of connection that just does us so good, that just does so well for us? So it's probably hard to put into words, but I mean, it is, it is. But, but here's what I've come up with. They, these animals can reach people on a level that we as humans cannot. Sometimes that there is an unexplained part of it. Um, but what I'm seeing when I'm interacting, um, with people is it's unspoken. You don't have to say anything and it naturally for the most part just happens. Um, I think the one thing that I remember about my animals, um, I'm not always worthy of being loved or not have bad days. I'm human. Um, but they, they still give me that affection. They don't give up on me. So I think for a lot of, uh, people that's, that's what we, we really need. Yeah. And that, that sums it up for me. The, un, the you know, the grace, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they just provide that, that grace. There's also the funny joke that usually husbands say is like, if you lock your dog and your wife in the trunk of the car, <laughs> can see which one will be happier to see you when you open it. Please don't try that at home. That's, <laughs> especially yes. not now. Um, because it does. And, and, and you do, you definitely feel that you, we all need to be reminded that we should still be loved even after mm -hmm. our, our, our sort of our worst days. So where are some of the places that you have seen the impact of your therapy animals around? Where are you getting out and getting in, into the community? Well, um, uh, I think a lot of the people see us at University Medical Center in Batson. We were able to support them virtually through COVID with therapy animals um, uh, straight from our facility in Rankin County in Pisgah. And yesterday I was at University Medical Center um, with therapy animals and you will also see us out and about sometimes training with these therapy animals and other handlers, um, their handlers. So veterans homes, police stations, fire stations, schools, um, I, we travel around the state. We've been to Merit Health, so a ton of different hospital locations, nursing homes. We don't want to leave anybody um, out and that's that's really what this organ organization is about 
um, is we do. We go everywhere. Um, there are a lot of facilities, veterans. Um, I think a lot of victims, I, I think since I was in certain situations before, I have a, a lot of victims uh, come to me or reach out to us, autism, whether it's ADHD, um, whatever it might be. And so we do a lot of work with district attorney's office and courts when the victims are testifying in Rankin County. Um, we're able to go support them every month. That's crazy. I mean, to wrap your mind around where, you, you know, you just think we all or many of us listening to good things have our fur, fur babies at home and don't recognize what a joy they can also be mm-hmm. or a help um, in a tool they can also be for so many uh, throughout the day. You mentioned the training part. That's got to be I guess, is it tough to train different animals? I mean, in term, or I mean, I guess you have it down to kind of yeah. a system. Or can any animal be trained? I guess I, I should say it that way. This is I, for, this is the mother speaking in me. This the animals and the humans. Not only do we have to train animals, but I have to train the humans as well. Handlers, um, you know, and. There's an art to that. It's like a child growing up. We don't know what to expect, and we've got to just roll with it and do the absolutely best we can and and put in our evidence-based techniques to try to make things happen, um, to guide them to, you know, what they want to do. They don't always, uh, they're not always able to do therapy animal work, so they're not always cut out for that. And so we want to find what they do thrive at. So I think that's the great thing about our organization is if that dog or that handler, the volunteer uh, may not pass for therapy animal work, um, the obedience and the public access training, then we want to make sure that they have a place and we find them something to do and we find what they thrive at. So it does take a while. It does take a while. But then when you when you get done with it or you have an animal that's trained, that's when they mm-hmm. can go out and do their best work. You guys are sending in your um, childhood besties that were of the animal world. Lisa and Clara says her siblings and her had a pet owl named Hoot, of course. Oh. Love it. And his <laughs> oldest sister found while running, kept him almost two years, fed him worms, and he li- he loved sliced tomatoes oh, which i think is really cute and someone said i'm not a youngster but animals are my best friend best friends and they sent a, a picture of their zeus which Aww. he said is his tennis partner <laughs> so you know i think it's it it makes sense and so why not harness this kind of love and affection that we we get with mm-hmm. our own pets and then give that to, to people who may not have access or you know yes. not have the ability to have uh, to have that because I mean, you're right. It's it's so much unspoken. You want to be able to articulate it, but some yes. of the the best things in life are are the unspoken, mm-hmm. uh, the uns- unspoken magic. Now, I understand the the animal. I mean, the dogs and the cats. But I hear you even have a trained monkey, ducks, llamas, all of all of the above. Yes. So we we wanted to I wanted to incorporate a lot of different animals. Uh, So some of the animals that we have um, and that we've we've had are llamas, alpacas, um, chicken noodle was an alpaca. um, I love these names. He's precious. Um, But chicken noodle. um, So some are. Cusco, our llama, of course, was a little older and passed away. So we also have ducks. We have a ferret. We have um, Amazon parrot, cockatoo. Um, So whether we've got exotic, we've got reptiles. We have an 80-pound African spurred tortoise. Um, We also have a tegu lizard. Um, And if you don't know what a tegu lizard is, look it up. Um, Some of them are amazing. And uh, we also have a snake as part of our program, Bearded Dragon. So probably if you're thinking of it, we probably have it. It's the snake (laughs) beer therapy because... (laughs) (laughs) Right. The snake is awesome. So, you know... I. I wasn't big on or never really had a snake growing up, but a lot of people connect to the reptiles and the snakes. And I've really grown to love reptiles on a whole new level. Well, we've got someone in the building who I won't name his name, Will, (laughs) and he is mortified of snakes. Probably just the word of it. If he hears me talking about it, he's probably hiding under his desk. She didn't bring a snake, Will. No, no. (laughs) Don't worry. We wouldn't bring that into your nursing home if that's where where you needed it. But we need you to stick with us. we got more for you. Come-
out more. You can head on over to supertalktv.com. You'll see I have a hairier <laughs> guest than Rhino, which we're coming up on a year ago that you had your last uh, haircut. I just saw where we are <laughs> only a month away from our 10th annual Radiothon there for Palmer Home for Children. And I think when I think about the mission of Palmer Home, I think, man, they need the Mississippi therapy <laughs> animals there with all of the kids that they rescue and uh, restore. If you're just joining us, I do have Miss Katrina Miller. She is the founder of Mississippi Therapy Animals. And man, you guys really are up to some good. And I feel like I'm like, why? Why are we just now hearing about this? I mean, it needs to be, you know, and I know there's there's always such a greater need than there is mm -hmm. availability and the time and energy that you go into um, training your, you mentioned your 20 animals on site. So let's talk about the site. So you have all 20 <laughs> therapy animals under, well, maybe not under one roof, but yes. what does that look I mean, what does your backyard look like? Okay, so we have about 30 acres out in Pisgah, and of course we have a farm animal area, we have an exotic animal area, and we also have a building for our domestic, for our therapy dogs, and of course our home. I reside there because I have to be there with all the animals, um, you know, to take care of them. Um, but yes, so from a Coatamundi, a South American Cody exotic animal, all the way to a horse we have on site and baby doll lambs and chicken tender, the golden retriever. Which I feel like is, again, I mean, if you, he, you, he just makes you happy, right? Yes. It just makes you, it makes you want to smile. And I think that's the biggest sort of part of this. Um, where do you get your, where do you connect with your animals? I mean, I get the golden retriever or even the horse, if you've got some cats or something like that, but you mentioned the 90 pound tortoise or yes where, how do you come across like does someone call and say Katrina I've got an animal no so I had to actually wait uh, about two years to get this African spurred tortoise and I just have these visions in my head and once you research um and really research on how that's going to be therapeutic for somebody um, my brain just takes me to those places so this huge 80 pound African spurred tortoise is just amazing. His name is Walter. And some of the victims that have come out with me and sat in that grass at our at our place in Pisgah, um, it's so amazing because Walter will just sit there and you get to feed him. And as you're sitting there, that child gets, just gets to be lost in that moment. He's really still. He's calm. And uh, the touch, sometimes for children all the way to adults, sometimes it's about the touch as well, the feeling of that animal um, and that interaction, like a reptile, a tegu lizard. Um, I'm a very hands-on person. Um, my child needs sensory things um, incorporated and so you know that gives you an example of how that can be therapeutic and how I choose my animals. Well, if we all, anyone who has an animal, you know that it takes a lot to keep them healthy and keep them housed and keep them all the things. And so, how does that? I mean, you guys are a nonprofit, so how do you yes. how do you stay afloat? So we need the community's help. Uh, we don't receive grants. Uh, we still are a building nonprofit, and uh, my sweet husband and Miller's Landscape. And myself through working um, extra outside of the nonprofit is what keeps it afloat. Um, and now as we get the word out, we can get the community's help to actually keep these animals year round and actually help us get to the places we need to get. So community out there, anyone, we need you. Go to our website at mstherapyanimals.com and fill out that contact form so we can get you involved somehow, some way to help us, to help others. Because it takes volunteers to be able, not only you train yeah. the animals, but mm -hmm. there's also that opportunity for the right passionate person who, you know, feels feels led to this, that they can then connect with your animals and mm -hmm. take them into their community, right? I mean, it's, or yes. or partner in some, some mm -hmm. way. It's not just come and care for them, like literally yes. expand the reach that it can get. It is. Um, so no matter if you even don't even want to work with animals, there's still a place for you with in our nonprofit. Um, so please reach out even if you don't want to handle an animal or if you can't even be on site, you can volunteer virtually. 
Um, and so there's always something for you to do and to give back, even from the couch at your own home. So. Which I know, too, and you were gracious, but donations or any way you can financially yes. support will also <laughs> help keep uh, keep Mississippi Therapy animals afloat. I know you've also taken this vision that you had for this, Katrina, and you've spun it off in other states, a mutual friend of ours, Amber yes. Shepherd, which is a Mississippian by heart, but now she's uh, practicing law in Louisiana. She's, I don't say, or similar organization yeah. um, uh, over there. So if someone's looking to, you know, just just to do more, I mean, mm-hmm. is there is there room for it to grow? Oh, absolutely. Um, there is. Amber's amazing, and I'm so proud of her, and I'm honored that, you know, she was able to do that and gives me a little credit, or actually a lot of credit, not that I want it, for being able to do what she's doing, um, but we do. So I, there's only so much of me to go around, and, it, and it's about others. So we need you, and we need you to be trained to take these animals out into the community, wherever it might be, to reach everyone. What does that training look like? Because I would be sitting here thinking to myself, oh, I love animals. I wish I could do that. We have so mm-hmm. much need. You know, it's a small town here, but, I mean, I can't train animals. I mean, I yeah. don't know what I'm doing. Is it, I mean, can you be taught to teach other animals or to handle them well? Like, and what's that? Is it long? You're talking about years, weeks? So every person is quite different as well as the animal. Um, I do my best, of course, to match you um, the best I can. We we do match. Um, But it is a process. So one person might take six months and the next person um, might find out that might not be the right fit for them. It might take a year. So it does vary, but from puppy up, just to give you an example for a dog, for example, usually it takes a minimum of one year. But don't let that discourage everyone because I've done all the training with our animals here at home. That process is complete. So training you, for example, Rebecca, that might only take you know three months. Um, So it just depends. Um, But it's a lot of fun. We work around your schedule and we always we just find you a way to contribute. So which I think to someone mentioned, what is the website? It's MSTherapyAnimals.com. You're also on all the social outlets. I feel like there are folks listening that says, oh, my gosh, this, you know, I want to this is something I would love to sort of get involved in and take to your, uh, you know, your um, sites for children or elderly sites or hospitals if you have that connection uh schools or you know all of the all of the Mm -hmm. above i think has a good a good spot for it yes there's so much good work going around too in terms of those of with victims of different kinds Mm -hmm. domestic and all and so man there's a spot for every animal (laughs) it is it's a spot for every person a spot for every animal um in our organization so You know, even facilities and businesses as well, workplaces, I have actually incorporated uh, an on-site facility therapy dog in North Mississippi at uh, Magnolia Regional Medical Center in Corinth, Mississippi. So we also have that part of the program as well. We're actually putting therapy dogs inside at workplaces. So to, to get started, anyone who is interested, go to our website at MS Therapy animals.com fill out the contact form and we will reach back out to you one by one and get you the information you need and get you involved Um, we also have uh, two names we have Mississippi Therapy Canines we have a doing business as name Mississippi Therapy Animals Um, so it's the same thing so if you go to social media Facebook you will see Mississippi Therapy Canines um, and also Mississippi Therapy Animals, um, and that is our page. Dee Jones already comes from a dog training background, N-A-D-O-I and Startech, Startech or something. So I assume okay. you would excel- be a, an accelerated student. Yes. So even other dog trainers, we support you. Um, reach out to me, and we want you involved. We want you to volunteer. Um, you have special training and you know you can be utilized so absolutely and this could also be a part-time hobby right like you wouldn't have to be full-time with mrs you know i say that because you know if you if you're nervous about it i just 
Yes. If you feel that tug at your heart, we need more of chicken tenders and Walters <laughs> out in Mississippi making yes. folks, you know, feel loved and safe mm-hmm. and have those moments of just pure joy that we yes. get from our fur family mm-hmm. already or rep tile family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and speaking of that, Jeff in Oxford said, when I was a child, I had a pet terp- terrapin. Ter- terrapin. You knew I was going to struggle with that. Ah, terrapin. I was you about to say it. <laughs> built a six by six uh, foot pen in the shade that included a pond, a large piece of tree bark, and he could get underneath it. He ate lots of fruit berries, also fed him soft cat food. <laughs> and so, see, we just all have those, those connections. Yes. Well, girl, I think this is the first of of many conversations. I love what you're doing. I hope people connect. And you guys stick with us. we got a few more good things for you.